This is Pi Time PRHS, and I'm happy that you are here. I am joined by Chef Mason. How are you, I'm Chef? I'm so well. Thank you for being with us here today. Thank you for inviting me to your kitchen. This is going to be wonderful, isn't it? It is wonderful. We're so happy to have you in our newly renovated kitchen. This is a great kitchen. This is a like fantastic one. And then we've got a couple of uh, sous chefs right here. We do. Some Maybe of our second you? year students. We have Anna, we have Jonathan down at the end, and Nate over here on the other end. Help you guys, us. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, yeah. Just to help us here today with our fire time. You guys ready to do some cooking? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. So I actually brought along kind of a famous, well, I don't know if it's famous. I brought along kind of a family recipe. Sure. So this is a recipe that I got from the daughter of a French patissiere for pot sucre. Okay, so it's going to be fantastic, is what he's saying, basically. It, it is actually quite good. I have to tell you, like, I asked these guys before we got on camera here if they like to eat the dough. Like, when you make, oh, have you yes. ever made a pie and you roll it out and there's, like, little pieces the crusties. left over? That's what my mom used to the call crusties. them, the crusties. Exactly. You just bake them off and it's a snack. So apparently these guys are not really into the crusties that much. So I'm thinking that's because they haven't tried pot sucre. I agree. Because once you've tried pot sucre and the crusties from pot sucre, you're really going to want to dig in. They're going to be converted. In. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we can't wait to dig in. So we've got all of our ingredients here and we're making three different kinds of pies today, right? We sure are. We're going to make a apple crisp pie, which is the best of both worlds, pie and crisp in one. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah. And then a pecan pie and a pumpkin pie. Keep it a little traditional. Very cool. Well, and actually, so Thanksgiving's coming up. It sure is. So these, is, this is actually kind of a good warm up to the Thanksgiving season. It is, it? and we are actually going to be starting our pie th fundraiser um, in, a, in a week or so. So this is a great way Tell to kind of Tell me about your pie fundraiser. I don't know about that. Well, what we do is we uh, market and sell pies to our community, and whatever funds that we raise go towards scholarships for our students who move on to post-secondary hospitality careers. That is awesome. Yeah, it's great. pretty amazing. So we're actually warming up here. We right? are certainly warming up. Very good. Okay, well, let's get started then. So, the first thing, so this is our recipe, uh, handwritten out by Sabine Pichon, who was there. Um, and the first thing we need is we need two cups of, two and a half cups of flour, actually, I think. Now, probably I should be sifting this flour, shouldn't I? But we'll just let it wing it here because that's the way we roll. And it's more fun that way. It is more fun that way. So, I need about two and a half cups. We need to have cup measuring, maybe a little less than that. And it also Sounds depends good. on the humidity, how much moisture your flour will take and things like that. Is that so, right? Okay. Yeah, it's a little, you a know, little pinch a little of feeling. sugar. Okay, we'll get, or a pinch of salt that was. Sorry, yes, thank you for correcting me. We'll throw some sugar in here. They're just going to sweeten it up. Okay, we stir that around a little bit. And then actually, can you unwrap that for me? Would you unwrap that one for me? And maybe do you want to separate some eggs for us? Separate the yolks from the yeah, whites. Yeah, I just did, but don't drop them in yet I because won't. I'm gonna need to. You just throw, throw the butter in there, throw that one in there. We take our handy dandy pastry knife. You guys use pastry knives? Uh, we do for a couple different couple things. Couple recipes? Yeah. Um, sometimes we do pie crust in a food processor also if we're having to do large quantities. Oh, you can quantities. do it quickly? Oh, yeah, see, I'm not really big on the huge yeah. quantities thing. And it's important you keep that butter cold because that is what is going to make your pie crust flaky, all those little pockets of fat. If we get it right. If right? we get it right. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. But that's definitely one of the tricks. Right, if it gets all mushy on you, then forget it. That was actually pretty fast, wasn't it? Oh, absolutely. You, yeah, there's a nice can use. We'll clean this off. Okay, so Chef, what do we think about that kind of texture? Does I that look pretty that good? I think that looks great, yeah. You guys think that's okay? Yep. Put some butter in there. Okay. So then we throw in these guys. And actually, we're going to need a big stirring spoon and a tiny bit of water. A stirring spoon, we can get right in there. Uh, some water, please, Anna. Let's see. Do you have a flat spoon? I should have thought about spoon. that. I could try that one. Try that one? Okay. Yeah, okay. We'll give it a whirl. Sure. Why don't you go into our closet and see if you can find a. a well, just because it will get all solid spoon. I know. We've already, done. We've already done the I've already the made blending. a mess. Yes. <laughs> it's not fun unless you, might, you sometimes make a mess. Just water. Right? Nope, just, just water. Again, you know, depending on how much humidity is in the air and how much the flour is already absorbed or how dry it is, it'll there it is. determine yes. how much water it will take. Is that what it is? Yep, and then the yolks will add another This is why you're the chef and I'm just... 
cute. You know, I have. Is that what the yolks are doing? I yeah. thought it was just for color. Well, for color, but they'll also add a, a, a depth of flavor. It'll be more rich. Okay. Um, when you eat it. So definitely we're going to need a little bit more water yeah, because it's more dry. Water. Yeah. So here, why don't you just give it some water in there and then we can add it a little bit at a time. You liking this recipe so far? Looking good. Looking good? Okay. I'll like it better when it's done. Yeah. <laughs> you will like it when it's done. It's going to be tasty. All right. Thank you, Anna. All right. Let's we'll stir a little bit of this A little there. bit at a time. And again, you want to keep all of your ingredients super cold because that's how you're going to get the flakiest crust. Um, because when you put it in the oven, the heat will turn all of the liquid ingredients into more uh, steam. You guys, I'm learning pockets. a lot of things today. I didn't imagine. <laughs> we were just making pockets. That's great. Well, there's science to it. You know, baking is a science. Right. Right, because there's so chemistry cooking. taking place, yeah. right? Yeah. Cooking, you can kind of, you know, pinch here, smidge there. With baking, it's a little bit this more is really scientific. Dry, huh? Yeah. Or math. Or math. There's definitely math, math involved. Too, yeah. Probably okay. more math than science. You think, you think so? so? Yeah, because if you get one thing wrong with baking, it's, it's a flop. It can be a flop, absolutely. I don't know, don't you like just winging it on a recipe, just sort of throwing things together and seeing what it does? Well, if it's just regular uh, cooking, like maybe making beef, then yeah, because then it's, you're kind of expressing yourself and you really don't have any one concrete flavor you're going for. You can kind of have maybe a, a sweet taste, maybe more of a sour or spicy. But with cook, uh, baking, if you add a little bit more or a little bit less of one ingredient, it's going to completely change what's happening. It's the texture, the crumb of your product, absolutely. Really? The way it rises or spreads, whatever you're trying to do, how it reacts with um, the acid. I should really take a cooking in test, your shouldn't food. I? Oh, you're just going to go for that I'm water, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. okay. There you go. We'll I'm going so slow. No, please. <laughs> Let's give us time to chat, too. That's part of the fun of cooking, also. It is, honestly, yes. <laughs> and you get to share these things that you do know and, and your knowledge and stories and history that go along with the food because okay. food is also a memory. So, this is the favorite time you get to actually put your hands in it? Yeah. We have yeah. washed our hands already. Hands are the best tool in the kitchen. It's starting to come all together, which is always a good sign. <laughs> it's more water otherwise, right? Right. <laughs> so is there something about handling it too much? Like you try to handle it a little you bit, right? Try as to, little you as try to as little as possible because flour contains gluten. And right. the more you work gluten, the strands become stronger and lengthier and you get a chewy, tough, tough, tougher dough. Uh, texture with it. When you have pie crust, you want um, it to be short, all the strands to be really short. Um, just like if you're making biscuits or scones or something like that. So the less you handle it, the better. And you can always let it rest if, if need be also. And then it chills out? Yeah, literally. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you sharing your family recipe with us. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> it's always great to learn something new. Uh, so is that, I mean, I got that recipe obviously from somebody, but is that unique or that's pretty much any, any pie dough? Well, no, not because not all pie dough includes the yolk. Um, oh, really? Okay. Right. So a lot of pie doughs can be as basic as flour, sugar, uh, water, and butter or shortening or lard or any type of fat. So right. with the inclusion of the yolks, like I mentioned earlier, you are going to end up with a little bit of a more rich crust. Okay. Um, also a little bit crunchier and oh, nice. um, the color is going to be deeper. Okay, what do you think? Does that look okay? I think that looks awesome. I think we can only get three out of the other. All right. What do you think? You guys ready? One, two. All right, one for you, one for you, and one for you. All right, do you want some flour, yeah, you're gonna need, guys? These guys are going to need some flour. Let's make them a little pile. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you. Okay, so do you know how to do this? Do these guys know how to do this? So we, this is their intro class for pie making, okay? Oh, it is? Okay, yes. wonderful. Because it actually in our curriculum that we use, our Pro Start, baking is in uh, secondary year. So okay. we haven't actually got to all of our technical baking, so this is a great intro for them. So I would try to, so if I, tell me if I'm wrong, but I would basically start by smushing it down. Mm -hmm. That is a, a nice, technical term. Yeah, it is. <laughs> is there another term? It is, no, that's great. Okay. I make up words all the time. Don't and I? then when I yeah. roll the dough out, like I always try and go, and I'm sorry for taking yours over a little bit. I go from the outside first, like, and I kind of work my way towards the middle. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, because we don't want to end up. <clears throat> so, so what you want to do? Yeah. So, yeah, you kind of got it's it. It's super flat. You want to get it as round as possible Duff, before you right? get too far okay. along. Nice and even. Yeah, perfect. From the outside, and then you just work it out, and then you always keep your pie tin handy yep. because uh, you want it when you get to the right size, then you can stop. Absolutely. <laughs> And if you need to rotate it to end up with a more circle piece of dough, that's definitely okay do that. Too. Yeah, so and sometimes you can pick yours up. and flip it over sometimes too, every once in a while, so it doesn't get stuck on you. Yeah, yes. exactly. What's your favorite kind of pie? Apple pie. Apple pie. Apple crisp. Because that's what's coming. <laughs> How about you? Any personal favorites? Um, I love apple pie. This is hard. I, mean, I know. Pecan pie is good. You it's a some really good one. In, right? Exactly, and the, you can't beat pumpkin pie on anything, right? So. I know, it's a great country. In fact, I think you can have pumpkin pie for breakfast sometimes. I think it qualifies as a breakfast food. Does it count food? as a breakfast food? I think food? most okay. pie qualifies as breakfast food. So then when you're ready to start to put it, so yours is almost, yeah, you're probably good, right? Maybe just even one little roll across it and uh, to smooth it out, and then I'll show you, I mean, I don't know if this is a good technique or not, but I'll show you my technique for doing it. So what you're going to do is just flip it in half on top of itself, Maybe just make sure you got a little flour in there so it's not gonna. There you go. And then just slide your pie tin up and you're just gonna slowly lift it up and get it halfway across. And then you'll be able to unfold it in there. There you go. Because we want to get the edge flopping over so we can finish our edge. There we go. Oh, you got nice. it. Nice. How are we doing Excellent. over here? You're in good shape? Okay. okay. It's got stuck to the table. Yeah, you gotta rotate that every once in a while. All right, so you're definitely, you're big enough over there, probably. You can get yours in. So just okay. try the fold in half technique. So you lift and make sure you have all the edges tucked in because you want to have all that room available for our delicious For the good stuff. Fillings. For exactly. the good stuff on the inside. I mean, do you have a specific way that you finish off your high press that you'd like to demonstrate? I do all kinds of things. So whether Go it's crazy. a pitch or... <laughs> well, so first of all, we need to, let's cut. Like, we have a knife. A knife? Sure, I'll go get that. And actually, so why don't you just tear a little piece off and taste it? Because you're really going to want to. I mean, you are the chef, so you are supposed to taste it. Is it decent? It's okay? Yeah, okay. If you have extra on one side, you can tear a little bit off and give it a try. How are we doing down there? Uh, we're getting it in there? Yeah. Very good. It's being difficult. Sometimes they are. And then just what you do is just sort of slide it in a little bit, and then it'll be fine. And actually, the thing with pie crusts that are really interesting mm -hmm. is if you don't have it perfectly around, <clears throat> you just steal some from another part, right? So, for example, we could just like cut that off because we know that's going to be too much, and we can stick this right over here. And then I just do a typical pinch. Have you, I'm sure you've done this. Have you done this? Yeah. Okay. So go for it. So just a typical pinch. Yeah. You, do you know how to pinch it? So you're just gonna like put it in and give it a little bit of like. No, I like to stand mine up a little bit. Where'd the chef go? I'm right here. Oh, there she is. Because because <laughs> it gets kind of crispy. It does. And I, I like that. Now, I don't know if everybody likes I that. I do, or not. and it works out because my kiddos like filling and not the crust. Oh, Same really? thing with my husband. So you so eat the crust? I I go and I pick the edges off, and then they eat the middle. Just seems wrong, doesn't it? I know. It's, just, it's so sad. <laughs> yeah, so sad. <laughs> You're doing great. Perfect. So everybody's doing a great job here. And then after this, we're gonna then fill these things, huh? We sure are, yep. We'll tidy up a little bit, and we'll okay. come right back. And tidy then, is good. Tidy is good, clean as you go, work neat. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> I, should, I might be able to learn that, is that what you're saying? <laughs> I don't say anything. I, I teach by showing. There we go, <laughs> demonstrating, okay. All right, so why don't we finish up our pie crust, and then we'll be right back to fill them up. Sounds great. Okay, so what's the next thing we're doing here? All right, so now it's time to make some of that pecan pie. Pecan, pecan. pecan. I love pecans. You say pecans. Yeah, I say pecan. pecan. Yeah, okay. Right. Birds of a feather. Okay, so what we need to do first is we have some halved pecans here. Okay. And we need to reserve about a cup for the top of okay. the whole, or the whole halves, whatever. And then we're going to chop up another two cups to put inside of our filling. Okay. Um, so if you start working on that, I'm going to come talk to my butter that's speaking okay. to me. And I have some butter just melting in a saucepan here. And to my butter, I am going to add some brown sugar. Okay, it's just melting away. 
And I'm gonna add my brown sugar, about a cup of a brown, uh, cup of brown sugar in here. And we're gonna wait till this all melts down and gets happy together, okay? So this is good to have friends in the kitchen with you. Everyone's helping doing their piece. Everybody's got their piece as we move it forward here. Things get done quickly. And you create memories at the same time. I'm just going to take it off the heat. See, it's just kind of like a... So what was in it? Oh, sugar and this butter. This is just brown sugar and butter. Okay. Yep. Two wonderful ingredients. This pie yeah. is actually really, really easy. Um, to this, what I'm going to do is add a cup of corn syrup. Okay. Definitely have to brush your teeth after yeah, this. Yeah, please. Dinner. This is a low carb version. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, but it's the holidays, right? Yes, you don't exactly. do this all the time. So it's okay. As long as you don't eat the whole pie, well, at least right, at, at one sitting. <laughs> yeah, you gotta share with friends. That's Guilty. what you're doing, right? Does yeah, that look about right? Or that looks more? beautiful, yep. Maybe another handful of them. Okay. Sure. We don't wanna be skimpy on yeah. our batons. That's the star of the show. So then I'm just gonna mix this all together. All right. And the part that's gonna help bind this together and keep all of our ingredients happy and together are gonna be our eggs. So I have four eggs that I'm gonna crack into this bowl here. There we go. One, two, three, and four. And then I'm gonna whisk these. There we go. I'm gonna whisk these together and then I'm gonna slowly incorporate my um, corn syrup mixture into this because the corn syrup is hot, right? Uh, and the eggs are cold, and we don't want to end up with scrambled eggs. So uh, we do something called tempering, which brings the two temperatures closer together. So you okay. don't end up with scrambled eggs. So I'm just gonna get these nice and whisked first. And so I'm slowly gonna add just a little bit, and this is really, really hot. So I'm just adding a little bit to get those eggs kind of feeling that heat so they don't scramble. You do this also with um, different sauces and custards. So if you're making creme brulee, you would okay. do the same type of technique mm. uh, to incorporate the creme cream. Creme brulee sounds good, doesn't oh, it? Oh, I know, <laughs> yes. All of it sounds good. I was trained formally in pastry art, so. Oh, there you go, you know. okay. So it must be painful for you to watch us cook, huh? <laughs> no, I love it, I love it. I've had my daughters, I have two daughters, uh, three and four, and they've been helping me in the kitchen. Great. And they've been cracking eggs since before they were two. My four-year-old's piping rosettes on cakes at this point. Oh, nice. Yeah, we have a good time. So now that that's all incorporated, we're gonna add some vanilla. You wanna add that vanilla right in here? Okay, there just we go. Pour it right in. And then what you can do is we can just add those tropicons right in here. That wasn't so hard, right? Can you no, smell that vanilla cake. instantly? Oh, I do. Yes, yeah, it smells yeah. good, doesn't it? So good. And then what Anna's doing is getting our pie crust ready because this is basically done. That's it, right this there. This is it. This is all you have to do. So Anna is getting our pie crust finished up. Oh, wow, that was actually pretty easy. So easy, right? It doesn't need Wait, to be complicated. Wait, one, two, three ingredients, four ingredients? Very, very few. Yeah. Um, so she is using a decorative leaf cutter and cutting out leaves for our border, our edge on our pie. And she's making it even a little bit more special, right Anna? What are you doing to those pretty leaves? I'm making little cuts in them so it looks like veins and There you go, right? It looks like a real leaf, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah how about that? <laughs> awesome. So we're going to keep working on that. And then also what I had her do is, um, actually this is going to be for our pumpkin pie. So we're going to set this guy aside. It's a little turkey. I mean, you have, whatever cutters you have, you can feel free to use, whatever you enjoy. Um, so Snowman for today would have been appropriate, right? Snowman would have been appropriate for today. Absolutely. <laughs> it's beautiful out there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely made it fun getting in this morning. Yeah. All right, so we'll just wait till Anna's done. And we'll be back. All right, so Anna has beautifully finished the pie crust right now. Can you explain to us how you bought those leaves to stay on? So I used a mixture of eggs and butter and you whisk it together and then you could use either a brush or your finger and you just take some and put it along the outside and it acts like a glue to stick them to the crust. Yep, and then you could even brush it over the crust after too. Kind of like a glaze on top, it'll right? Make it shiny, it'll yes. make it a little darker, all again because of those beautiful egg yolks, right? Yeah. All right, so here we have our finished filling and then do you want to just pour it in, Anna? 
Mmm, look at all those chopped pecans. It's gonna be beautiful. Oh, it's gonna taste great. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be great. All right, let's see what we're doing here. All right, this is great. And so then what we're gonna do lastly is we're going to take some of our whole halved pecans, right? And then we're just going to take them and put them around. So if you guys wanna, don't be shy, right? We're gonna lay them in a beautiful pattern. <laughs> There we go, all the way around. And you can just do the exterior circle or you can do um, all the way in. It's up to you. Depends on what you would like to do. Depends that on how day. much you like pecans. How much you like pecans, right? How much you like the people coming for dinner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that's beautiful. And if we wanted to, like I said, we could use one of our baked uh, turkeys, turkeys on top. and we could put that right in the middle also. So I'm going to pop this one in the oven. Okay. And. Here. And I have, I put it on a sheet pan with some parchment paper in case there's any spillage. I'm not a huge fan of scrubbing pans. I don't know if you guys are. No, I it's prefer not parchment over yeah. scrubbing. So we'll right. put the parchment paper on there. And then this one um, has already baked and cooled. Wow. And there we shingled the whole way. We did a different finish on the exterior. We did a simple pinch crust here. Um, we let the pecans be kind of the star of the show. And you definitely want to let this cool down a little bit to let the filling set uh, before you. Because otherwise it's going to go. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. And you won't have a pie. You'll have that like looks a, good. So when do we get to eat this? When do we get to eat this? At the end. Oh, okay. We'll taste all of them. I know. We have more work That's to do first. That's really the most important we part. We have is to eating. finish our work first. There you go. Then we can taste, okay. right? All right, so we'll be right back for Apple. Great, so what are we doing now? All right, so now it's time for our apple crisp pie. I love apple crisp. It's so good. Yeah. Um, so what Nathan has done for us already, he uh, washed, peeled, and sliced some Cortland and some Granny Smith apples. We do that because the Cortlands are a little sweeter, the Granny Smiths are a little more tart, so you have okay. a nice balance of flavor. Uh, you don't want everything to be sweet, 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 right? right? We need to have some balance. And to that, you're gonna add some seasonings for us, right, Nathan? I have a teaspoon of lemon. Mm -hmm. Lemon juice. Okay. I have a teaspoon of cinnamon. Oh, nice. Break a lot and I have about a tablespoon of sugar. Yep. Okay. And then once you mix it, you can taste it and adjust your seasonings as need be. So if you want to just give those a toss, Nathan, and I'll talk about our crisp topping, which is the second star of our show. So in here, I just have some oats and some flour with some cinnamon, some nutmeg, and a little bit of brown sugar, and I have. Not yours, but we have our okay. um, handy dandy pastry cutter because we're making that crisp topping. So we're gonna cut our fat, which is just some butter, okay. into our oat mixture, which is going to make our crisp topping. So I'm just gonna pop this in here while Nathan is- Crumble top is so fun to make, isn't it? It is, and you a can- A little butter, a little sugar, yes. and anything else you wanna add in there. Absolutely, <laughs> you could add a little ginger to this, some fresh crystallized ginger in there would be nice too. Mm. Uh, anything really, but you just wanna cut this up so the butter is into nice little pieces and runs throughout your crisp topping. So as it bakes, it gets those oats nice and crispy. It doesn't get dry. Um, that, that flour will also help to make it a really yummy, delicious crisp topping. How it looks like doing? there's a secret ingredient that's coming in on the end over there, is that? What is it? The butter? Is that, no, is that caramel? Brown sugar? Oh, caramel, yes. Well, this is the crowning final touch. Oh, okay. Is a drizzle of caramel at the end. Oof. Wow, that looks good. I know. Do we need to do quality control? Do you need to taste no, some? I, I'm okay. I might just dip my finger in there. Is there you go. That's yeah. absolutely fine also. Um, it just adds another little nice dimension. And caramel goes so well with apples. It does, right? yeah. So, I mean, who doesn't love a caramel apple? Right. It, well, exactly. And then this way you don't have to break your teeth. Right. Eating your caramel apple. All right. So, Nathan, why don't you give one of those apples a little taste, see if it needs uh, the sweetness adjusted or how we're doing. How does it taste? Good? Thumbs up, awesome. Okay, so okay, what we're gonna perfect. do now while you finish chewing, you're gonna pile those apples as high as you can. You can use your hands yeah, if you want. Hands are your best all, tool. Them in there. And pile them high because those apples will cook down. And you don't wanna have a very thin, skimpy apple pie. You want one of those like mile high apple pies. Don't you pies. hate that when they do, like it's just like a yes. grater and you're like, wait a minute. Or on the double crust pies when you cut into it and it's all air. Yeah. <laughs> It looks beautiful, but there's no substance to it. But we're gonna make sure that that doesn't happen. We're gonna pile those nice and high. 
We're going Empire State Building high here. No so. joke. We don't mess around here at PRHS with our pies. All right, keep going. Really, you can keep it more. Oh than yeah. That? Oh wow. Totally. And if you slice them thinner, they'll cut. They'll cook down even more. Okay. So if you like a softer texture for your apple pie instead of a lot of crunch to it, if you slice them thinner. Uh, you will achieve that and they'll cook down beautifully. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be amazing. So it's up to you what you want to do. You're the chef, right? When you're the chef, you're in charge. You it's get like the you're the artist, right? That... <laughs> Absolutely. Nice job, that's perfect. And then we have some chef's treats, right? <laughs> All right. And... No, we're good, that's okay. <laughs> and then to finish this up, we're gonna go ahead and just, just kind of pile our crumb topping right on there, right? Our crisp topping. All that butter is in there, and that's another reason why we use our, thank you, why we use our parchment paper. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the cleanup. I really enjoy cooking. I've never been a big fan of cleanup, so anything I can do to save time make and make it easier. Right, so more... this way when it spills over, you just exactly. throw away the paper just and you're good to go, right? Okay. All right. So. Oh my gosh. That's it. Right? In so, the oven? Why don't, Nate, why don't you throw this in that oven and I'll grab the other one and we'll show how we finish it off, okay? Is there, yeah, is, is there room on top or not so much? Uh, not so much. All right, why don't we trade? Empire State Building. All right, we'll trade then. Nate, you can put yours in here. All right, and then it will cook down. That one was this. Was, was it the really? same height. Yeah. Wow. It was the same height. And it does cook down. So the finishing touch is going to be our caramel sauce, right? So what you do is you just kind of, and then you just kind of woo. There is no nice, rhyme or reason to it. If you like a lot, put a lot. If you don't like a lot, put a little. It's up to you. Again, you are the chef, you are the artist, the creator. You get to decide. Wow. Nathan, that looks pretty good. You did a great job on that one. What do you think? Would you eat this? I'd eat it. Would yeah. you be proud to present this to your family? Probably. And it was super easy, right? Yeah. Awesome. So we're gonna put this to the side. We have one more pie to make, and then we are going to definitely have a feast ahead of us. So we know what Nathan's having for Thanksgiving then, right there? Apple pie. There you go. All right. So what are we doing now? So now for our final pie is going to be our traditional uh, pumpkin pie. That I think everyone Thanksgiving's really coming. I pumpkin know. pie. Absolutely. So what we started with is we just have a couple of cups of pumpkin puree. And to that we're going to add some spices and some other ingredients. So Jonathan, why don't you start adding some of our spices. We have some black pepper. We also have pepper in a pie. Yes, it's one of those like background notes that you can't really detect what it is. It just adds a little something. I to don't it. think I would have guessed that. Uh, well, you'll have to tell me what you think about okay. it. Okay. All right. Then we have some cloves, some ginger, nutmeg, and cinnamon. All those traditional oh, spices. It you smells great. It smells here, like Thanksgiving, it? right? Yes. And um, one thing, if you don't have these readily available, you can just purchase one of those little pumpkin pie spice containers uh, because these are costly and if you only use them seasonally, then right. it's just a waste of money. So we're not gonna do that. So to this, we're gonna add three eggs. One, two, three. And that's going to help. Um, so why don't you just use your whisk now, Jonathan, to start incorporating. I can hold that for you. Two and three. And this is gonna help set our custard, right? Because this is basically what it is, it's a custard pie. And then the last couple ingredients that I have here um, is a combination of heavy cream and a little bit of whole milk. Okay. Um, so it's about a cup of heavy cream. So would you normally use kind of the combination and not just I all do, heavy cream? I do, because I, when I went all heavy cream, it was it was too much. Oh, it really? It just felt too rich, too rich. on the palate. Okay. Right. Um, so this definitely cut it a little bit, but you've got that nice creaminess, that richness, without it being almost like cooling. Oh, Jonathan, doesn't that smell good? Yeah. And so now that you have that all mixed together, we can add our milk and cream. And then the easy, I mean, this is pretty easy also. All these pies are pretty easy. See, all of these recipes, you just like threw this pie together in like two minutes. In no time. And you know what the star of the show a lot of times is that crust. So we're really grateful that you brought that into us today. <laughs> we'll see, right? Yeah, we will see, won't we? Yeah. Um, so once that's all combined, we're going to go ahead and pour it into our prepared pie crust. And we'll bake it in the oven 
for roughly an hour until it's set. It's still gonna jiggle a These little take bit. a while, don't it they? It does take a while. Um, <clears throat> and you're also gonna wanna make sure that you don't uh, over bake it. If you do, that's when it tends to crack on the surface. Um, also, you wanna make sure you allow ample time for it to cool down. This is another one that you wanna let cool down. Uh, with apple pie, you can have it steaming hot out of the oven, that's fine, but with the pecan and with the pumpkin, you want to make sure that you have allowed it time. It's usually about three hours. So otherwise it's going to go mush when you cut it, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it won't hold its shape and it'll still be delicious. So if you're working on Thanksgiving, making pies for Thanksgiving, you got to make sure you plan ahead. I would do them the cool. day before. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, and if you wanted to heat your apple pie, you can put that in the oven after you take turkey out and then you can just have it warm warmed up there. that way. Yep, so why don't right. we go ahead and fill our pie crust. I'll take your whisk for you. Thank you. Moment of truth. <laughs> okay, that's Ooh, well, that looks great. That looks awesome. And then we have some extra here. So what I would do is if I didn't have any more pie crust, I would just put it in a little baking, like individual baking dishes or something like that. And then you could have little pumpkin custard. It's like too. a pumpkin custard. Yeah, yeah, totally. So we're gonna put that one in the oven and we are going to pull out the one that's already done. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back with all of our pies in front of us for tasting because that's that's why we're here, right? actually. Here. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in a second. So you guys were working pretty hard on these on these pies, weren't you? Absolutely. So what do you think about the process, Nate? What do you think? Well, the process is fun because it smells delicious, <laughs> and then after you get to eat it, so sounds good. I can't wait to eat it. It's a what win -win. do you think? I think some of them are like really easy to make and really good. It did come together quickly, didn't it? Yeah, you guys are just like whipping these things together. Absolutely. No well, you what's your favorite part about pie making, Jonathan? Probably eating it. Oh. Eating it. Well, then let's do it. Let's Everybody do it. Again. Let's see what this looks like. Mm. Everyone gets an A today. Everybody gets an A. That is awesome. <laughs> really good pies. Well, thank you so much for coming to visit us here at Plymouth. We loved having you. Thank you so much for letting me join you. This is awesome, and you guys are learning some great skills here in this brand new CTE Center. Thanks. Thank you so much.